Good evening, my name is Karen Oliver and welcome to the Acoustic Induced Vibration and Flow Induced Vibration Seminar. Acoustic Induced Vibration and Flow Induced Vibration are two common phenomena that can lead to vibration induced fatigue failures in piping systems. Pipeline facility managers, operators, designers, and engineers are faced with identifying and mitigating the risk of acoustic induced vibration and flow induced vibration to avoid catastrophic instances of vibration induced fatigue failure in their facilities. This seminar identifies common challenges to conventional acoustic induced vibration and flow induced vibration analysis methods and discuss advanced techniques available to address these challenges. Vibration induced fatigue failures of pipework are a major concern due to the associated issues with safety, for example, a sudden release of pressurized fluid, which is hazardous or flammable production downtime, corrective action cost, and environmental impact. Therefore, it is in the interest of the duty holder or operator to minimize these risks. This is a job of everyone. We need to work together in order to avoid problems with acoustic and vibration-induced fatigue. Process piping systems have traditionally been designed on the basis of a static analysis, with little or no attention paid to vibration-induced fatigue. This is principally because most piping design codes do not address the issue of vibration in any meaningful way. This results in piping vibration be considered only as reactive basis. Data published by the UK Health and Safety Executive for the offshore industry have shown that in the UK sector of the North Sea, piping vibration and fatigue accounts for over 20% of all hydrocarbon releases. Although overall statistics are not available for onshore facilities, data are available for individual plants, which indicate that Western Europe between 10% and 50% of pipe wall failures are caused by vibration-induced fatigue. There are several factors which have led to an increasing incidence of vibration-related fatigue failures in piping systems, both onshore and offshore installation, and also on petrochemical plants. The most significant factors have been increased flow rate, as a result of the bottlenecking and the relaxation of erosion velocity limits, resulting in higher flow velocity with a corresponding greater level of turbulent energy in process system. For new designs of a short plan, the greater use of thin wallet pipework, for example, dopless stainless steel alloys, results in more flexible pipework and higher stress concentration, particularly at the small bore connections. There has been established some guidelines which has been designed to provide guidance, assessment methods and advice on control and mitigation measures for the following situations. When a new process system is being designed, when undertaking an assessment of an existing plan or process system, when changes to an existing plan or process system are being considered, such as operational, process or equipment changes, when a vibration issue is identified on an existing plan. The three first cases constitute a proactive approach to the management of vibration-induced fatigue, while the last case is, by its very nature, a reactive approach. It is hoped that by using the guidance given in this seminar, designer, engineer and operator, will move toward a more proactive approach of management of vibration-induced fatigue and acoustic-induced fatigue in process piping system. These guidelines cover the most common excitation mechanisms which occur in process plan. However, they don't cover environmental loading, for example, wind, wave, seismic activity, 
It should be noted that corrosion and erosion issues are likely to increase the susceptibility of pipework to vibration-induced fatigue failures. The assessment approach assumes that the plant has been built to the industry standard codes and procedures and is in a good condition. If this is not the case, a greater emphasis should be placed on the on-site inspection and measurement aspect. During this seminar, we are going to talk about acoustic-induced vibration and flow-induced vibration. Acoustic-induced vibration. In 1982, the Noise Control Management Group formed a Special Task Force 11 to carry out a project entitled The Measurement and Prediction of Pipe Noise. One aspect of this project was to investigate current information on the failure of pipe through acoustic fatigue due to high internal noise levels and, if possible, to make recommendations on, on how to avoid it. Published information on this topic is scarce and, for oil refineries, the main source of information was Exxon. So the first task was to circulate a questionnaire to participant refineries to inquire whether cases of acoustic fatigue had occurred which had not been reported. The results from these questionnaires and investigation deal to a series of technical procedures and recommendations to take into consideration the analysis of the effect of the acoustic-induced vibration. Mechanical failures due to high noise level have been reported from time to time in the technical literature, and the reported failures range from large fans in nuclear power station to pipes in null oil installation. CONCAWE Special Task Force on Measurement and Prediction of Pipe Noise was therefore asked to investigate this problem as it affects oil industry. Exxon has recently published a paper on this subject, and this has formed the basis for concern within the oil industry. It reports on an investigation of 36 pipes with high internal noise level, on which five failed due to acoustic fatigue, two other failed because of high vibration levels. Three of the pipes failing by acoustic fatigue were downstream of valve in compressor recycle system or safety let down system and two were downstream of power plant the superheaters. As a result of these experiences, Exxon has formulated a design guide to avoid failure by acoustic fatigue. The evidence reported by Exxon was sufficient to indicate that there could be a risk of acoustic fatigue in pipes with high internal noise level, but the problem of investigating this phenomenon is that it is not recognized as such and, and the failures may be attributed to other causes, such as static stresses or faulty welding. The main report from European sources has been a case of failure of the blade of a large fan in CO2 circulator of a nuclear power station. This report, published in 1972, gives theoretical design criteria to predict the fatigue life of both well pipes subject to cyclic stress due to noise. But despite this, acoustic fatigue has passed as unrecognized phenomenon, even in the oil industry, where extremely noise pipes are not unknown. CONCAWE therefore decided to carry out an inquiry among European refineries to determine whether there were unreported cases of failure by acoustic fatigue or whether there were cases of failure which may subsequently be attributed to acoustic fatigue, although not recognized at the time. To carry out this investigation, this special task force prepared a questionnaire on the topic, and this was circulated to the associated companies of the CONCAWE for inquiry among their refineries. It will have been desirable to obtain quantitative information of the noise level in cases of failure and non-failure in order to supplement the data report by Exxon, but it has to be recognized at the start that there was only a remote chance of noise measurement being available if failure occurred. 
The aim, therefore, was to obtain qualitative information on the noise level from the subjective impression of the operator at the time of any failure. The objective of the acoustic inducive vibration study is to assess the piping system and to investigate recommendations to minimize the likelihood of failure of piping and piping components due to high frequency acoustic excitation. Piping vibration can cause metal fatigue through different excitation mechanisms. One of those is acoustically induced vibration. In gas systems, high level of high frequency acoustic energy can be generated by a pressure reducing device. The pressure reducing process induces turbulent pressure fluctuation in the flowing medium, which in turn excites the downstream pipe while causing stresses and potential fatigue failure. Acoustic fatigue is a particular concern as it tends to affect safety-related system. The time to failure is short due to the high-frequency response, as well as giving rise to high tonal noise level external to the pipe. This form of excitation can generate several high-frequency vibrations of the pipe wall. The vibration takes the form of the local pipe wall flexure the shell flexural mode of vibration, as can be appreciated in the attached picture, resulted in potential high dynamic stress levels at the circumferential discontinuity of the pipe wall, such as small bore connection, fabricated teeth, or welded pipe support. The picture shows the shell mode vibration of 6-inch pipes subject to acoustic induced vibration at 650 Hz, and it was analyzed using Abacus software. The high noise levels are generated by a high velocity fluid impingement on the pipe wall, turbulent mixing or shocked flow a short wave downstream of the flow restriction. They are a function of the pressure drop across the pressure reducing device and the gas mass flow rate. Typical dominant frequencies associated with high frequency acoustic excitation are between 500 and 2000 Hz. In recent years, there has been an increased incidence of vibration-related failures due to process piping system being exposed to higher flow rates, use of thinner wall pipe due to use of higher strength materials, piping system privileges being designed on the basis of a static analysis without taking into consideration dynamic effect, particularly vibration-induced fatigue. Mitigation methods should aim to limit the amount of excitation, lower acoustic energy, or reduce the susceptibility of the piping to the excitation by using contrary teeth, avoiding small bore fittings in areas susceptible to this excitation me mechanism, or by implementing heavier, heavier wall thickness piping. So the objective of the acoustic induced vibration study are First of all, identification of high-frequency range excitation source, prediction of noise level and risk assessment, and finally, determine susceptible correction action to mitigate the risk of failure. The systems potentially at risk are those that include some elements causing a sudden drop in pressure, such as pressure relief valve, control valve, orifice plates, and have this particular consideration. System whose internal flow is in the liquid phase are not subject to this vibration mechanism. System whose flow is biphasic should be considered assuming that all mass flow is gaseous. The methodology of the acoustic induced vibration analysis is, to, is conducted in two stages. First, analysis for individual device and analysis for the simultaneous relief cases. De devices which fail at any stage are then subject to the next stage of assessment as shown in the charter attached. The first stage is called the screening stage. The screening stage uses simplified and conservative methods to identify devices which can have a potential cause of acoustic-induced vibration failure in downstream piping. The objective of this stage is to safely reduce the scope of devices which require detailed assessment. In this stage, the sound power level at the source is compared with the most conservative allowable sound power level for the downstream line. 
For simultaneous relief cases, the total sound power level resulting of combined all the sound power levels by logarithmic addition is compared with the most conservative allowable sound power level for the downstream line. For all those elements that, that haven't complied with the screening stage are required to perform a detailed assessment. The purpose of the detailed assessment is to predict the dynamic fatigue risk for piping identified as being of potential concern in the screening stage. The sound power level at each asymmetric discontinuity is calculated taking into account attenuation due to the distance from the source and piping geometry. Once this calculation has been performed, is identified which elements fail the screening stage and the detailed assessment and which one has been passed. Once all this information is collected, the, the possible modifications are established and the actions taken into account on the design, on, in, even though on the process data. Flow-induced vibration. Vibration induced by internal flow is the result of turbulent flow in the pipeline that excites the first modes of pipeline vibration. It is a quasi-stationary phenomenon and therefore considers period of constant flow in the pipeline. This excludes system categorized as NNF, non-fluid pipe, since low frequency vibration occurs that take a long time to fail a system due to fatigue. Buried pipe is considered continually supported, giving it sufficient rigidity to avoid the effect of internal turbulence. Flow-induced vibration is the result of turbulence in the process fluid, which occurs due to major flow discontinuity, such as bend, tease, partially closed valve, and small bore connections. The high level of broadband kinetic energy created downstream of these sources is concentrated at low frequencies, generally less than 100 Hz, and can lead to excitation of vibration mode of the piping and connected equipment. The extent of this problem depends on the piping design, support configuration, and stiffness, valve operation, and other related factors which determine the severity of the resulting vibration. Management of the risk related to the flow-induced vibration can be tackled through screening activities to pinpoint piping section of concern, vibration monitoring, and investigation of identified problems, and development of targeted modification to operational parameters, the pipe work configuration, and support. What is the flow-induced vibration? Piping vibration can cause metal fatigue through different excitation mechanisms. One of those is flow-induced vibration. Flow-induced vibration, also known as flow-inducing turbulence in the Energy Institute guidelines, is a result of turbulent flow in the piping, which excites low-order bending modes on the pipeline. Flow-induced vibration is a quasi steady state phenomenon and hence considers period of sustained, steady, flow in the piping. This is opposed to the rapid valve opening assessment, which specifically assess transient events. High level of broadband kinetic energy can be generated by turbulent flow, and this can cause fatigue failure of piping and pipe restraints, if the response of the piping is receptive to the excitation input. Piping with high stiffness, as measured by the fundamental natural frequency, are more robust to flow-induced vibration failure, as excitation levels decrease at increasing frequency. The scope of the flow-induced vibration studies cover the assessment of risk due to the flow-induced vibration. It doesn't include the assessment of vibration generated by other mechanisms, for example, compressor pulsation, mechanical vibration, and vortex-induced vibration. The following conditions form a part of the criteria for determining the scope. Only pipe 2.5 inches or greater in diameter is considered in the study scope. Lines with normally no flow are not included. Non-metallic pipe is not included. Underground or buried pipe is also not included. The systems potentially at risk for flow-induced vibration are those in which there is a permanent flow inside the pipe. This excludes systems categorized as NNF, normally no flow, 
since it is a mechanism that produces low frequency vibration below 100 Hz. It takes a long time to fail due to fatigue. Buried pipe or underground pipe is not considered subject to this vibration mechanism as is considered, which is constantly supported and that gives the system a rigidity that avoids effects of internal turbulence. The study of flow-induced vibration is divided into three distinct phases, described by the Energy Institute. One stage is which a first filter is made, a second stage in which the lines that have not been approved in the first filter, and a third stage in which uses the natural frequency of the system. First stage. A preliminary screening conducted to highlight lines of concern in accordance to the Energy Institute guideline, assuming worst-case condition. It is checked, checking that the kinetic energy should be less than 5,000 kg per meter and square second, according to the technical module of the Energy Institute guidelines. For those lines that doesn't comply with this requirement, a second stage is required. A standard assessment using the Energy Institute guidelines for lines which have failed the preliminary screening process, for this line that have not been approved in this first stage, it is necessary to carry out a detailed calculation of the probability of failure. For this, in addition to the data of speed and density, the dynamic viscosity is needed in the lines whose flow is in a gaseous stage and the geometric characteristic of the subject line to the study, such as the outer diameter and the thickness of the pipe. The probability of failure is calculated as is shown on the attached picture. For the lines where the second stage is insufficient, there is a method alternative as long as the supported configuration is flexible and the fre natural frequencies of the system is between 1 and 3 Hz. In the case, the probability of failure is calculated in the same way but with a vibration factor that is calculated according to the equation shown on from the American Energy Institute. Once the mainline probability of failure has been calculated according to the stage 1 to 3, this value should be interpreted as follows. If the probability of failure is less than 0 0.3, the line doesn't require any type of correction action. If the probability of failure is between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, the main line is valid from the flow-induced vibration point of view, but must be checked at small pipe connections. However, if the probability of failure is higher than 0 0.5, corrective action must be taken on the main line to make that value decrease. If this is impossible, the line is considered vibrated by flow-induced vibration. In this way, corrective measure must be applied and the line must be supported accordingly to this consideration. In addition, a natural frequency of the system must be guaranteed above 15 Hz and check the small bar pipe connection. This has been all the introduction to the acoustic and induced vibration and flow induced vibration. On this bibliography, we include all the representative document related to this with these two phenomena. It has been a pleasure, and if you have any doubt or question, please let me know through the chat. Thank you. Bye bye.